If you want to study effectiveness, you have to study it under situations that look like real-world clinical practice. That is not typically what you see within a randomized controlled clinical trial. Certainly that is what you see during observational studies. The thought behind pragmatic clinical trials is that you can keep some of the aspects of an observational study and keep randomization like you have in, a, in an RCT and hopefully thereby get some of the benefit in terms of having a greater explanatory power that you have uh, with a controlled trial, but do it in a way that gives you insight into what happens in the real world and about the effectiveness of treatments, not about their efficacy. So no one trial design is going to be right for every question. Uh, but there are a number of considerations that we brought to bear to decide which design to use. Um, under circumstances where um, there is really uncertainty about what is the best therapy to use, and you, go on, you want to compare the different therapies that are being used, under that circumstance, either an observational study or a pragmatic clinical trial should give you good information. When there really isn't um, um, equipoise, as they call it, but there are preferences about different therapies, those preferences will lead to um, confounding issues about which patients get which therapy. Um, and therefore, observational studies have to use a variety of statistical techniques to draw an account for those confounding and biases. Unfortunately, the same thing is true for pragmatic clinical trials. If there are real preferences, you'll find a lot of switching going on in pragmatic clinical trials, and you'll end up with the same kind of problem. Sometimes, when the amount of preference is so strong, you will not be able to do a pragmatic clinical trial to study the question either. The only way to study it would be to do a standard, well-controlled, randomized clinical trial. That was the case a number of years ago when everybody presumed that bone marrow transplantation was a great salvage therapy for breast cancer. No one wanted to study it. They thought it was effective. The only way to prove that it actually was not only not effective but possibly harmful was to do a standard RCT. So equipoise or clinical choice is a very important issue, but there are many other important things that you'll take into account. Um, feasibility. You may not be able to do an RCT. Sometimes, uh, depending on where you're doing it, um, randomization won't be acceptable either to a government or to a private payer, and so they won't, you won't only be able to do an observational study or a registry. The cost will be a consideration. As you go from a pure observational study to a pragmatic study to a standard RCT, the cost of these studies go up, and the truth is we're not going to be able to do as many all-hat studies as the people think we'd like to be able to do. So there'll be a variety of, of questions you're going to have to answer as you think about what study design to choose, and then you're going to have to optimize the design based upon the constraints that you have. A lot of people spend a lot of time bashing observational clinical trials, and this seems to me a unuseful and actually counterproductive discussion. There is little doubt that there are some very well-known cases where the results of observational studies were contradicted by RCTs. We all know all about this with uh, hormone replacement therapy, et cetera. What is ignored is that the vast majority of observational studies may have somewhat different results, but don't really contradict what happens in RCTs, but do give us important information about how the effectiveness and safety of drugs used in the real world differ from that in RCTs. We need to get away from RCTs are better than observational studies. They answer different questions. We have to understand that we have a tapestry of evidence. We need to add it all together to be able to most cost-effectively develop the evidence base we need to improve healthcare delivery.